The guy who beat Max Drew at the endurance competition from Beast of the Bars at Beast Wars two weeks ago, Bruno, is now in the interview. He shares a lot about his endurance workouts, about his nutrition. You see all the topics of the interview in the timestamps here, so you can jump to the topic that is most interesting for you. In the name of Team Gore Nation, I wanted to say thank you for an amazing 2023. Let's rock 2024 together. Thanks for your support and let's jump into the interview. So Bruno, th welcome to the podcast. I'm super happy to have you here. We met the first time. I think two weeks ago, uh, roundabout, and uh, in, in Sweden, Stockholm, where you've stunned everyone with your extreme power and endurance during the, the uh, Beast Wars endurance competition. And you've won there. So congratulations again. Um, and yeah, super nice to have you here. Thank you so much, man. Uh, first of all, uh, hi to everyone who is watching this. Um, yeah, it was a it was a, a blast, you know, the whole competition. Uh, crazy story, I almost didn't come, um, w uh, which was because, like, the qualification round that we needed to send online was just after the like uh, World Cup that was uh, held down in uh, Latvia. So I was fully injured, and I was like, I should probably skip this one, you know. But something in my head tell me, no, no, you need to come, you need to come, and I was like, okay. I'll do it injured, these qualifications. So if it passes, it passes. If it don't, it don't. And it passed. So yeah, um, this was definitely a life changing moment this year. A highlight, definitely. Nice. That's super cool. What kind of injury was it uh, from Latvia? It's not actually from Latvia. I was also going in the World Cup injured. Uh, there, it's a uh, tendinitis, you know. I have uh, overuse injuries from high volume trainings and stuff like that. So yeah, it's, it's pretty hard to get rid of. <clears throat> That's true. Nice. So yeah, uh, it was super nice to get you get to know you there. I'm super looking forward to this interview and to get to know you even better. Uh, can you tell us more about yourself? Who are you? Where are you from? What do you do? Yeah, of course. Uh, so everybody know that my name is Bruno. <laughs> I come from Croatia. Uh, I live next to the capital city of Zagreb. So um, I, right now I'm working at the television house. It's like, I'm actually proud of it. It's number one television house in Croatia. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I really love my job. So, uh, I currently do a street workout as like a hobby, something that, uh, will eventually maybe, uh, I'll be able to, you know, uh, make a full time job out of it. Uh, outside of that. Uh, like my other hobbies, I really love shooting videos. I love editing videos. I'm a pretty great, creative person. So I kind of like to connect, you know, street workout with, uh, shooting videos. So I, uh, always try to make some dope edits and stuff like that. Nice. And in the television house, your, uh, your job is a videographer or what are you doing? Uh, it's not uh, really videography. I don't shoot videos, but it's pretty similar. I kind of edit them. I work in the softwares that are made for like uh, graphic designs, something like After Effects, uh, Photoshop, um, stuff like Adobe Premiere and yeah, something like that. Interesting. And uh, about the hard facts, because I know people always ask about them. How old, how tall and how heavy are you? Oh, yeah. Uh, that's true. Uh, I'm 172 centimeters uh, tall, about 76 kgs, um, and I'm natural, so we can cover that fact as well. <laughs> <laughs> nice. And how old are you right now? Oh, yeah, I'm uh, 25 years old. 25. Nice. Yeah. Um, maybe just tell us about how you got in touch with the sport. How did you start uh, doing crazy rep numbers like uh, today? You, you, you have to have started somewhere as well. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's a, uh, it's a, a story that's probably every 14 year old can uh, attach to because like, you know, when you hit puberty in your 13s, 14s, you always think about, man, I need to get shredded for the girls and you know stuff like that i need to be uh, handsome for, for for the girls and uh that was basically the same story with me i kind of wanted to get buff because i thought that the girls are attracted by uh a muscular guys and uh 
not much after I realized that's not the case because in all this 13 year old career, I kind of attracted more guys than girls. So guys, if, <laughs> if, that, if that's your main goal by starting it, don't even try it. Uh, but yeah, anyway, I started like that. Uh, I think it was like seventh or eighth grade uh, of my elementary school. Um, I remember going out and there was like a empty space um, outside my school backyard that uh, guys that were like maybe one or two years older than me made a primitive street workout part there and they they were kind of having just uh, regular workouts and at the time i didn't know what street workout is and when i wanted to get buff i was always thinking about you know going to the gym but for that you needed the money and i didn't have the money at the time and also there were rumors that you shouldn't go to the gym lift weights if you're that kind of, that young so that sport kind of uh, that's why i get interest uh, interested in the sport and there was that one guy i think yeah he was probably one year older than me but when i saw him bro you get you had to see how shredded he was i, I was like do you really can you really look that way by just you know doing basic basic exercises like pull-ups push-ups dips and he that he had that uh, max true uh, apps, you know. So I really got attracted by that. So I was like, okay, that's the sport I'm gonna try and work out, you know. And basically, that's how I started. I was pretty uh, strong for a beginner. I would say I was already able to connect a couple of pull-ups, push-ups, um, dips. So I kind of started with circular routines, a couple of you know pull-ups, push-ups, dips, uh, separated by a minute minute and a half rest and <laughs> everything else is history i guess interesting so uh yeah <clears throat> because when you said uh, that you wanted to get uh, buff for the girls i think the the most common thing would be to go to the gym uh which uh, as a young guy with 13 14 is difficult uh, because i also had the the rumors or i don't know if it's true but uh, that young young guys shouldn't lift weights because uh, it can stop their growth or like give, give problems later. Um, but um, yeah. yeah, so you started at a high, higher level um, in, in street workout, like higher level in terms of most people struggle with their first pull up pull ups uh, in the beginning, but you had a really True. good foundation already. Did you do any other sports before? Yeah, yeah, that's what I just wanted to mention. Uh, because I have such a good foundation, I was actually uh, training wrestling, which is like a straight strength sport. You really have to have some power. And I remember after every training session, a trainer will told us, uh, before you go home, you need to do this, this, this exercise for this amount of reps. And that was kind of motivating because we couldn't get home before we finished all the, the reps. And that's kind of... Actually, that was my first uh, touch with street workout. Just I didn't realize it back then. But yeah, I was doing pull-ups even back then. And we were climbing ropes, doing push-ups and stuff like that. Interesting. <clears throat> Can you take us more on the, the way to uh, becoming the Bruno you are today? Uh, the guy beating Max True at the, the Beast Wars uh, competition. Um, can you take us more what was your training system why did you progress so fast is it um because you train uh, like really disciplined and uh, with a good system or do you think it's more more your genetics can you take us more on your on your way from the 13 14 year old to now sure <clears throat> so i think uh, all that you mentioned i think it's a little a uh, little less everything in a certain amount. So I definitely think that I'm uh, gifted genetically. I'm, as you heard, I'm pretty short. I mean, 172, 76 kilograms. Uh, but of course, there is a lot of hard work behind it. Um, I think that I started with a pretty good um, foundation and uh, training style because I kind of, even today, I stick to the same kind of um, approach that I began with, which is crazy because uh, I was fortunate enough to even start uh, to train that way, which is kind of circular routines with short amount of rest. Uh, I didn't really know anything about the sport back then, but somehow, you know, I managed to get it right because many people start one way and then kind of uh, change it 
uh, on the way forward because they kind of look the other videos, uh, hear what other people are talking and they think, you know, that's the way to go with it. And they kind of change it and their body just doesn't, you know, have to adapt on a uh, new training style. So yeah, I kind of started uh, correctly. I was, uh, I actually wanted to be a freestyler back then. Uh, I mean, that was pretty popular at the beginning of uh, Kelly's Tanks, you know, freestyle doing uh, planches, doing front levers. But I never uh, specifically trained for a freestyle. I was always uh, doing regular trainings with uh, pull-ups, push-ups, dips. And then when I felt like I have a strength, I would like just, you know, try to do a straddle planche or a back lever. And that's how I climbed up. That's how I, you know, realized, okay, I'm por powerful enough for this. Let's now go, I don't know, to a bigger element. But then I realized, even though I'm good in statics, uh, acrobatics was never my strong suit, uh, which is uh, very important for the competitions you want to have, like static, dynamic, dynamic and acrobatic, if you want to win, you know. Uh, so that's when I realized, okay, maybe maybe this freestyle wasn't for me, but I still realized that um, every night I'm doing sets and reps, so I kind of, sets, sets and reps wasn't popular back then. Uh, it was getting popular maybe four years after I started uh, to train calisthenics, but I always kind of stick to it. And when it got popular, I remember that I signed up for uh, a first competition. I was already going to college back then. And I realized I have potential, you know, to to be good in that. So I kind of stick to it. I realized uh, I were, there were a crew back then that I trained with. Uh, and we were basically on the same level on everything. But I always realized at dips, for some reason, I'm especially good, you know, better than anybody in dips. I was doing the same amount of pull-ups as everybody, the same amount of push-ups of dips. For some reason, you know, I'm, I'm just good at it. I guess uh, genetics plays a big role in it. So that's why you can see me doing crazy sets like uh, with the dips today. But everything else is just purely hard work, I guess. But interesting that you say that you didn't change your training style too much because uh, I remember when I started with uh, strength sport in general, uh, it was always said that uh, you need to change, uh, like you need to shock your muscles, you need to give new stimuli to your muscle um, to ch and change uh, training styles like from uh, many reps to slower less reps and stuff like that to always have like new um yeah new stimuli for for the muscle what do you think about that um i definitely think that's true uh but if you compare i don't know smart approach with just a stubborn approach i think you end up you know on the same level at the end of the day because i think uh on the number one number one uh how would I say that on the pyramid scale was the most important thing. Uh, it's being, uh, how do you say it? Um, how do you say it in English? Consistent. Um... Cons actually, uh, yeah, ex yeah, exactly. Consistency is the number one key. So even with maybe a little worse approach, I ended up doing uh, good because I was consistent enough. I've doing this for 13 years, you know. So actually, it's a really, really long time when I started and where I am today. There was a really, really uh, big path in between. And that's super interesting because uh, we just had a, a live Q&A with, uh, with Max True two days ago. And he was saying basically the same thing, that there might be smarter ways. There might be more scientific um better ways than his training style but he's just um yeah he's just doing it and being disciplined and uh, like uh he's having a lot of volume and a lot of uh, reps in in it and this is why in the end he's uh yeah he's he's making more progress because he's just sticking with this thing and that's super interesting that you say the same thing uh, that's uh, yeah, yeah might not be the smartest but if you stick with it if you're disciplined if you do it consistently you're you're winning Exactly. At the end of the day, doing what you love is the key, you know? Yeah. Wow. Cool. Um, so can you take us into a typical workout week, uh, into your split for the week uh, right now? 
Of course, um, right now I'm actually deloading for the obvious reasons. <laughs> I'm injured as hell. <clears throat> but let's say I'm not. So my casual training week is like um, one day is like a circular training where I'm doing 70% um, pull exercises and then active rest. Uh, that are 30 uh, 30 percent uh, are push exercises so I use them for active rest actually they are not hard they are just there you know to keep my uh, metabolism going um, and then the second day it's uh, push focused training it's like a push endurance uh, 90 percent of the time that's like some kind of a pyramid where I'm you know doing uh, dips on time or push-ups on time let's say 130 31 pyramid with um 45 seconds interval rest can you um, explain that the, the 131 uh, yeah. uh what do you oh mean yeah sorry one? uh it's like a pyramid style so let's say you have an mm but in mm -hmm. you do the same amount of reps on the minute but i do like pyramid style mm so every 45 seconds i do one rep more i go from one to 30 and then I lower it down from 30 reps to 29, 28, 27, and back all the back to one, you know. So that's kind of the, the principle. And on the third day, uh, it's, it's kind of mixed. It's between push and pull, 50-50, or I do legs thir the third day. I often uh, listen to my body you know if i if i'm sore from uh, the day before i do legs if i'm not i'm doing the push and pull uh, kind of uh, training routine uh the fourth day oh wait let me think what was the fourth day um uh, i didn't i haven't done this in a long time because i'm so injured i forgot my training routine man. <laughs> i think good. it's uh I think yeah i think it's a, a push routine another push routine similar to uh, the one before uh fifth day is another pull routine and the sixth day is leg day so pull push legs or pull and push and then again pull push and legs i think it goes like that and then the rest day of course okay <clears throat> Okay, nice. So uh, you're quite balanced between pull and push, even though you're like, uh, that's at least like what I see is uh, like your your strength is uh, mostly in, in push, um, but uh, you put the same effort in pull and push uh, throughout the week, right? Exactly. I like to, you know, keep it balanced because even though I'm good in dips, that's like the only push exercise that I'm good at. I'm in push-ups, I would say I'm equally as good as in pull-ups. So... I can do thousands and thousands of dips, but push-ups are, for some reason, you know, much harder for me to do. So I like to keep it balanced for, you know, each case. Okay. Yeah, but push-ups, at least at the competition, was uh, the the exercise where uh, you had a lot of time won uh, in comparison to Max, who is like not not the strongest in push. Like it's exactly. a, it's a, both on ext extremely high levels. So it's, uh, but he himself says uh, like push-ups. Um, was was the weak uh, exercise in this uh, routine where he lost a lot of time. Yeah, exactly, exactly. That kind of saved me. <laughs> yeah, but how did you prepare for uh, Sweden? Uh, so you had your um, uh, your rehabilitation after Latvia, um, and how did you prepare then for Sweden? Uh, actually, all this time I was having rehabilitation. I was doing deloads for the whole time when I was uh, because I felt like is if I'm about to uh, turn up the volume, I'm, something's going to snap, you know, I'm going to get injured. So I didn't want to risk it. I actually, to be honest with you, I really didn't plan to win uh, because I knew that I'm not on my 100%. So winning was just a cr even crazy for me. When I realized that I, in finals with Max True, I was like, you know, you can actually see it on camera. I was in disbelief. I was, you know, shaking my hand, like, what the fuck is happening right now? <laughs> So yeah, I really didn't plan to win. I'm glad it happened uh, because I, I already told you it's like a highlight of my uh, of this year. You know, a great experience. But yeah, I I did like basically everything I just said I did, but maybe sixty to seventy percent less uh, of what I usually do. Sorry, thirty to thirty five percent. 
of what I usually do. So I was like on 65% of my true potential on my trainings. When was the, uh, your strongest point that you've been at your strongest? Uh, I think it was last year. That's when everything started to go downhill because uh, I felt, you know, it's because of kind of, I would like to say I was getting cocky with it because uh, I really felt strong. I so I wanted to push uh, my Instagram to grow, you know, and what I realized is when I do like crazy sets, like, I don't know, uh, breaking records or anything like that, it goes kind of viral, you know, so I wanted to do that. You know, I was like, okay, so all I have to do, all I have to do is break a record every week. You know, uh, at that point it looks, but it looked possible, but then injuries started to come. Uh, and I realized it's not, it's, it's not like that. So because of my cockiness, I'm today, I'm uh, going through what I'm going. <clears throat> well, that's a super interesting learning. And I think a lot of athletes have, have to do this learning, uh, because you can't, post a PR every week, you know, you can't no. uh, post uh, only the, like, uh, as you said, a record every week. Um, it's the body is not not made like this. It's uh, exactly. I think, do you have an endurance? Do you also have like peak phases and uh, phases where you're just uh, like, maintain, uh, because in, in street lifting, you have like these, um, yeah, these different phases you go through in your workout to finally peak after a few months, uh, and uh, do a one rep max lift. Um, How does it work in endurance? Time is a big factor in my training. So, uh, I mean, weather and everything. So when I train in summer, it's hot. So I'm not physically able to do my max. So that was kind of my deloading phase, summer and winter. Winter, it was too cold to give my max, you know. So more naturally, I was the strongest in spring and autumn. That's when I did, that's when my picking phase like uh, came in. So I wouldn't say I was really uh, thinking about it. it. Everything was happening so naturally, you know, and it worked. So I learned that if something something worked, you don't change it, you know. Okay. So if we would um, have someone, because we, in the in the questions on Instagram, we received a lot of general questions, you know, how to get at, uh, to this level of endurance and explosiveness and uh, your favorite uh, way to progress fast. I think it's really general questions, but what I felt and what I saw also with uh, with Max is that a lot of things that are normal for you are not normal for for other people. So um, maybe let's let's try to find some principles that you have about training that brought you to the level that you are here. Um, do you have mm -hmm. any mm -hmm. like principles, any rules for yourself um, that you think um, yeah made the Bruno who is who is sitting here today? Uh, well, I think I have a good one, uh, still, maybe a lot of people, uh, wouldn't find themselves, uh, in that principle. But when I do my trainings, I'm more considered about, uh, the rest time to shorten it than the, to put volume up. So in that way, I kind of adapting my body, you know, to rest quicker and not to do, uh, more reps. So my trainings are always like do this amount of uh, reps in this amount of time. And what's uh, what matters to me is amount of the time. So uh, in which I done the reps. So when I feel satisfied with the time, let's say, I don't know, I'm doing a thousand pushups. Uh, I want to do them in less than 25 minutes. You know, if I don't do it in less than 25 minutes, I'm doing a uh, hundred pushups again, the next time I'm not changing anything forms can be perfect, but if I, you know, satisfy my rest periods, my time, I don't, uh, change anything about my routine. So many people are, uh, considering, considering changing the volume, you know, across the time, but what I'm looking is, uh, like that rest in between, you know, to rest as, sh as short as possible between the sets. So you set yourself a routine, your training, you do it, and then you feel, oh, I could have done this uh, much quicker. And then exactly. like when you're just not maxing out, uh, you try to put the, um, the rest shorter uh, and repeat the same thing just quicker. Exactly. Exactly. And That's I, my when, approach. 
when do you go up in volume <clears throat> when there is minimal rest like i don't know 10 seconds or something or when do you go up in, in volume that's a good question uh i often like to go i mean it still depends of on the on the routines but when i doing my basic circular routine uh that is mostly pull-ups i lower my rest to 30 seconds uh so when i'm able to do everything in 30 seconds that's when i'm uh with perfect form of course that's when i bring up the volume even more okay so you bring down the um, rest to uh, 30 seconds and then uh, you like keeping the good form etc um, exactly. and then you go up in the volume and maybe you have to go up in the rest again then to 45 seconds or something and then you try to have the new volume uh, push it down to 30 seconds and then again you go up in in, in volume exactly like that yeah yeah interesting because that's a different kind of progressive overload um but without having to add like 1.25 kg of weight or like uh, without um, adding the weight incrementally but with shortening the rest time yeah that's the thing because in body weight i train i train pure uh, pure body weight i don't have another uh way to you know turn up the intensity but this one that you just mentioned yeah i lower the rest so that kind of comp compensates uh, with that intensity that I'm lacking. You know, if I turn down the rest, that means the intensity automatically goes up because I'm right now, uh, now I I I have much rest to work with, and that's why you know it's it's more intensified. And I think this training style leads you to uh, uh, regenerate quicker and at competitions to just be like more enduring. Because I think the, the term, uh, how do you bring up your endurance or how do you get to this uh, level of endurance is basically um, another question for how do you regenerate so quickly? How, how are you capable of uh, ref, ref, yeah, taking back power so quickly? Would you agree to that? Is, is endurance the capacity of uh, being able to regenerate quicker? Yeah, being able to do uh, the same intensity for a long amount of time. Yeah, it's like marathon. Yeah, you you kind of find intensity that works for you, for your body to cope with for the rest. I don't know, 30 minutes, one hour. And the closest training that you can do for that is like MOMs, you know. So you have a certain amount of time to rest, which is always the same. You try to keep the intensity same. And then you go for it for like, as I said, half an hour now. So yeah, that's exactly this, uh, what gives you that uh, endurance during the competitions. Ex uh, even though, you know, competitions rounds are more like five to seven minutes, not more than that, but still it gives you a great starting point, you know, increase your endurance. Yeah, because what I see also uh, when in the first set, like um, I think someone like me, an, an average athlete, let's call it, is always like it's easy to have the first set qu quite close to, to someone like you, but then the performance drops so much. And uh, like uh, someone who is ha doesn't have a good endurance is like after the second, third set, he's like dropping a lot and he needs a lot more exactly. rest. Um, yeah, and that's... <clears throat> That's what I love about these competitions, uh, about this, especially this competition that happened in uh, in Sweden, because whoever uh, made the rounds did them perfectly, because I don't usually rush in my rounds, you know. I have my own pace, and I realize if round is good, if it really tests your um, endurance, your strength, you don't need to rush. Just keep the same pace. Uh, if you are truly more endurant, you came up first in the end, which which is what happened, you know, uh, because people are, were rushing it uh, for first couple of seconds and they fell down. And I was able, you know, to keep my um, intensity the same throughout the, the whole round. So that's why I didn't really rush to, you know, put up my weight, uh, weight waist, take down my weight waist on those little, you know, because uh, if I can mention uh, at the World Cup, our runs uh, rounds were made a, a little less uh, perfect than, uh, than this because uh, they were more like a race, you know. Uh, rounds were like um, 
I don't know, maybe three to four minutes. And people who were really good in street workout, who were, which performance were uh, was pretty high, um, those rounds meant nothing, you know. Uh, and uh, the considering factor, if you're going to win or if you're going to lose, was uh, will you put down or up your rest quicker than the other person, you know. So that's why I really, really uh, love this uh, competition uh, in Sweden because of it. That's super interesting because, uh, yeah, uh, we had the same. I tried to also bring some of our athletes, uh, more athletes to, to Sweden, uh, to the competitions, uh, competition. Um, but in the beginning, um, when I talked with, uh, with Flefiel as, as the organizer, um, the rounds, uh, had like the, uh, were planned as more short, like the year before. And, um, then a lot of the athletes said, Hey, um, The, the high level athletes, hey, it's too short. If it's like uh, only three, four minutes, it's more like a speed competition and less endurance competition because uh, the exactly. true endurance is shown at uh, yeah, six, seven, eight minutes something. Um, and uh, like more simple routines, like um, less switching between the exercises, but uh, more reps uh, of, the, yeah. of the exercises. And um, yeah, it's interesting. I will, I'm writing it down because we're currently also planning the endurance competition for the FIBO, uh, which will take place in April uh, 2024. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, it's it's really good uh, like conf confirmation for that to have longer rounds um, and to more focus on this um, because it's, it shows really more the difference between an average athlete and then a high level athlete uh, in endurance if the round is longer. Because I, I will admit, when running, you see the people who are not experienced, they start like running quickly in the beginning, you know, and then they fall yeah. back. You see it everywhere. And I have to admit, yeah. when you set your 131 uh, pyramid routine, I also thought, oh, he only starts with one and uh, oh, 30 doesn't, doesn't uh, like seem that high as well. And I thought, oh, I think he, he, he can, can do better or I can do it. But I think in the beginning, yes, it's easy. But um, then in the, in the middle, <laughs> I think when you do the yeah. 26, 27, 28 and only 45 That's seconds. That's when it starts even. to burn. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, I think like having a good knowledge of your body, uh, having the confidence to not rush in the beginning, but to uh, keep the heart rate or the, the intensity the same throughout the whole round and uh, not uh, rush on the unimportant things. I think that's um, yeah, really good feedback and good uh, yeah, advice from you for, for competitions. Yeah, of course. Thank you. Uh, I wanted to mention one more thing, uh, especially those kinds of workouts help you when you are competing and when you got, you know, we got uh, our rounds on the paper for the first time, we saw them on the day of the competition. You can kind of mentally go through every exercise and kind of know when is, you know, going to get hard and how hard is going to be because you are already, you know, training exactly like that. So you kind of know how much to push at the start how much, you know, uh, intensity you, you should uh, have, how much rest you should take in between every X. So uh, it also gives you that kind of an experience, you know, having similar training routines like the ones on comp competitions. That's true. Do you change your diet uh, when preparing for a competition? Maybe you can uh, share your general diet way of eating uh, with us. Um, and uh, then if you change something when a competition approaches. Mm -hmm. and, uh, first of all, no, I, I, I don't change my diet. My diet is pretty fle flexible. Uh, I watch out what I eat, but not uh, the uh, in the way like I count in my calories, uh, more like I'm just not eating simple sugars or, you know, uh, how do you call it? Those fats that are not natural, but, you know, uh, mm -hmm. saturated refined, fats. refined, fat. uh, refined yeah. sugar. Yeah, yeah trans fats and mm -hmm. things like that. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to keep my body healthy in that way. Uh, the only uh, thing I keep in the track of is my protein intake, which is uh, 2.2 to 2.5 uh, grams per my uh, kilograms. Uh, of my body weight and that's really basically it i really don't uh watch out too much for you know what i eat 
Okay, cool. Yeah, but it also reflects my my experience that the protein intake is the most important. Um, how did you get to the two point two, two point five uh, grams? Um, did you, um, yeah, like just did you ever try more? Uh, I I would like to you know do more, but uh, it's hard to uh, put so much uh, food in my uh, stomach. Two point two was like uh, something that. I'm, I was just, you know, eating and I was measuring, okay, if I just eat like I normally do, how much, uh, at the day can, uh, protein can I, you know, uh, intake. So the results were like, uh, 2.2 and I was, you know, doing so, some reading and some research and for a bodybuilder, that's completely fine, fine, you know, two to 2.5 grams per kilogram. So I was like, okay, I just need to stick to my, you know, uh automatic routine that i have and i don't really need to change much about it which is great for me you know yeah generally how do you get to uh, like what kind of protein do you eat what what do you eat in general mm -hmm. uh so right now for breakfast uh i had some eggs i usually you know try to uh intake all my protein from the food, but I also am drinking away uh, protein shake, protein powder. Um, so that like fulfills all the gaps uh, during the day where I, where my protein intake is kind of low, you know, in between, in between eating, you know, uh, I kind of uh, do my protein shakes. And of course, after uh, the workout, that's when I drink as well. But multiple per day or uh, one per day or depending on how, how your meals were? So I would say uh, I drink like probably one scoop to one and a half scoop a day of protein powder and everything else is, you know, from the food. Okay. <clears throat> and so that's like 30 grams to 45 grams through the powder okay and do you eat a lot of uh meat like you already said eggs um what kind of protein sources do you prefer exactly uh i eat a lot of meat most popular uh is the chicken of course uh, so basically chicken and eggs like 90 percent of the time what i eat they are also the most cheap ones for for, for what you get you know for the price so it's pretty convenient when you yeah. try to train and eat healthy, I guess. That's true. And I think uh, it's super important to find a protein source that is, uh, that your body is, uh, is, is well, uh, well digesting and that you can work with. Um, because, uh, yeah, I'm, uh, always seeing like people trying to go vegetarian or, uh, even myself, I had the experience that, uh, if you try to force yourself to eat protein sources that your body is not digesting well and using well, uh, it doesn't make sense. And then you can, uh, you have like big troubles bringing up the protein intake, but, um, it's really something that I would recommend to everyone, uh, checking, uh, how much like checking your protein intake as the most, um, important metric and uh yeah seeing seeing uh, bruno's triceps and uh, shoulders uh, definitely is uh, is a good motivation for that to eat enough protein yeah start with chicken and eggs <laughs> <laughs> nice um yes you you sent me some um <clears throat> of your craziest perf like the of the, the um, performances that you're most proud of uh before the the call and uh, for me it was super stunning there were, you wrote 100 pull-ups, 200 push-ups in five minutes. Yeah. That's absolutely crazy because it's like the, I think it's an OG routine from back, back in the days from uh, like to have 50 pull-ups and 100 push-ups in five minutes, which is already a, a crazy thing because it's an imam of 10 pull-ups uh, and um, 20 push-ups in, yeah, in, in five minutes. Um, exactly. And you just doubled that. Um, tell us how, how, how. Well, I actually saw that from another person. You probably know he was uh, at the competition in Sweden. Uh, his name was Ura Rashke. He was third in the competition. Bro, his performance is just crazy. He was like my uh, one of my uh, idols back then because when I started, he and Kines, they have back to the basic channel. They were already pretty high and I will always respect them because uh, 
when I was, you know, just beginning with sport, they recognized my uh, performance, my talent, and they did a couple of videos when I was, I, as I told you, nobody know, know about me. So I always respect them for that. And yeah, I remember Ashke was uh, doing that set. He did like, uh, he did it in like, I don't know, four and four minutes and 45 seconds, something like that. And I was like, man, I had to try it. And I really didn't know the origin story of that set. I always, I always thought that that was the set and not, uh, you know, <laughs> the other one. So I was, I was kind of, it was uh, kind of easy, uh, you know, to mentally uh, go through it, I guess, because I thought that that's what has to be done. And I think I did it on my first try. It was, I mean, I were, I, were, uh, I was already, you know, uh, pretty high with my performance. That's, that was like, uh, on my very close to my peak performance. I think it was like maybe two or three years ago. I don't know when I recorded that set. Crazy. Yeah. It, it shows again that standards are super important. And, um, this is why we often see, um, like, uh, people training together who are all really strong, because if you surround yourself with uh, strong people, they become your standard, you know, in, in exactly. our gym, we always had, uh, Freddie as our, uh, like standard. He always did his 90, 95, 100 kg, uh, additional weight oh, pull-ups. And for, for us, it was like, um, the, it, it is possible, you know, we all look yeah. up to him and we had many, uh, guys, uh, like, um, pulling 70 kg, 75, 80, because for us, the 100 was, you were the, mentally the... prepared. Yeah. yeah, exactly. I like that. I like that. And even the girls that like, like my girlfriend who were only training with guys for them, for her, like 20 pull-ups is normal, you know, that, sh that she does 20 clean pull-ups is, is normal. But if you go, if she would only train with, uh, with, uh, um, let's say girls in uh, who's just started calisthenics, I think it, she would have different standards. And, um, this is why uh, I'm super interested in how, do you have like a surrounding, do you train yourself alone and you get your standards through YouTube or do you have, uh, like friends who you train with and they are also advanced or well, who is your training partner? Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> when I started with the sport, uh, I would like to say that I, that I was a standard to others because uh as i said uh we all started at the same time but for some reason i would always you know learn stuff quicker because as i said uh at the start uh when we first started with street workout we wanted to do freestyle net sets and reps so uh, i was always first to get i don't know uh straddle planche front lever you know and for some reason those guys didn't take that as a motivation they take that as a, oh, he's better. I'm not genetically built for this. And they kind of quick, uh, quit, uh, you know, training along the way. Uh, but if they, you know, take a different approach and, uh, told themselves, look, if he can do it, I can do it as well. Maybe I need uh, more time. I'm taller. I'm, uh, not genetically built. I'm, I just need to be more consistent. They will definitely do it. Yeah. So it's all about the mindset, uh, mindset, I guess. And when I was go growing through the sport uh i think having a standard standard that is better than you is uh the same as having no standard at all because i was training completely alone so i didn't know what's good what's bad but i was you know shooting for how you could say shooting for the stars right i always because i didn't know what's average i didn't know what's bad i didn't know what's good i was just aiming you know i need to be better so that's probably the same as having someone who is uh, actually uh, better than you. Well, yeah, like, as you said, when, when you have someone who is a lot uh, stronger than you, you can either take it as a motivation or as a, as an excuse. Um, and this is where, where it's uh, like with everything in life, you can always, you, it always depends on your reaction to it. Uh, you know, you can injure yourself. Um, but you can, can take something from it and more concentrate on, on learning the theoretical things about your sport or working on your weaknesses. If you injured your elbow, you can work on your legs or something. Um, but there are people who stop because of it and people who double down, you know, who say, oh, now, yeah. now I'm going to going all in. Um, that's interesting yeah, that you also had yeah, this. The, the best things that I learned, I learned from my mistakes, which is crazy. 
you know. So yeah, I completely agree, agree with that. You talked about statics, about uh, straddle planche and front lever. Uh, how how do you? What is your level in statics right now? Uh, probably close to zero. <laughs> <laughs> I was pretty good at it, you know, but uh, when I realized that I'm uh, having potential with sets and reps, I was, you know, going 100% at it because uh, if I would try to build myself in sets and reps and uh, do statics at the same time, uh, I'll probably be, be average in both of those, uh, you know. So, yeah, I kind of left statics behind. I think if I give myself one month, two to three months, maybe I'll be able to, you know, uh, bring back some of the best uh, elements that I could do, which is like a full planche, maybe for two to three seconds, but I'll definitely be able to bring it back. And Hefesto, I, Hefesto was probably my, the hardest element that I did. I don't know. I'm, I guess I'm bad in pulls. Some people I see pulling Hefesto like, like it's nothing, but it was like, much harder than full pl planche for me. So yeah, Hefe so I'm the most proud of it. Do you think there is a direct benefit of training reps and like a tr transfer of strength when training reps that you automatically improve your statics or that you automatically learn the front lever by doing a lot of pull-ups and when you're uh, elite in pull-ups? Oh, yes, yes, of course. Uh, because that's how I basically learn my statics through the sets and reps. Uh, so yeah. It's, it's basically the same when you see, uh, when you co compare, I guess, street workouter with a uh, bodybuilder, because I saw many street workouters when they, you know, try to lift weights, they will do much better than any guy who lifts weights and try to do pull-ups, you know, they're just kind of, because of that, maybe high volume training type of training, they just build themselves, you know, for uh other things uh they they basically have more power i would say so yeah definitely sets and reps sets and reps can build a good foundations for uh statics i think one reason is the high volume as you said uh, maybe another reason is the full range of motion because if you train in the full range of motion you also have strength everywhere and not like a bodybuilder who has uh, problems uh, holding a straddle planche because he doesn't have that straight arm strength because he only and if trains. you compare compound exercises with the uh, iso, iso exercises as well yeah exactly in the beginning you said uh, you're natural uh, and uh, why do you say that Bro, <laughs> I have like uh, uh, hundreds of questions from uh, other people. Bro, are you natural? And it's always funny to me to ask that question because even if I'm not, do you really think that I'm going, you know, to, to tell you that I am? But I am. <laughs> uh, I'm natural. Um, yeah, I guess people, uh, we talked about standards and people today have a really long st standards because they are not a lot a lot of people that are, that are truly putting in work and that are natural at the same time, I would like to say. And that's why, you know, when you see, and of course, uh, street workout uh, sets and reps, high volume trainings are pretty new to, you know, uh, human population, I would say, because uh, there are uh, many people are most familiar with bodybuilding and you already know what you are able to, you know, uh, achieve with bodybuilding natural, but no one knows what you're able to achieve with high volume body weight trainings, uh, natural. So if you see a street workouter, you know, that is better built than, uh, a bodybuilder, he's automatically, you know, on steroids or something like that, which is not the case. I truly think that, uh, for a great body street workout is probably much better options. If you are starting with, and you want to, you know, do it natural and not compete on the stage like other bodybuilders. Yeah, it's interesting because it's so much simpler. You know, you don't have to think about uh, a lot of things. As you said, maybe it's not the most effective way to get there, but uh, it's like really simple by just doing a lot of uh, volume uh, in pull-ups and dips and push-ups and muscle-ups. Um, and um, yeah, I think this way is also underrated to to build a physique uh, with, with calisthenics and street workout. Because there is still the rumor you can't build muscle with uh, with with street workout. 
Yeah, of course. And it's I guess it's pretty hard to follow through just because, you know, of such a high volume, it's much easier, you know, to go to the gym and do, I don't know, four reps, uh, eight reps for, you know, four rounds of these exercises and just, you know, kind of switch from one uh, weight to the other, keep your trainings simple, but it's really, really hard. You know, you really have to love uh, street workout that way of training to, you know, so you're able to cope with that kind of uh, intensity that the training can give you. Do you love your trainings? Do you love every training that you do? Of course, of course. And that's the that's why, you know, uh, I'm still progressing because I love it so much. I I think about training, but I'm not training, you know. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I 100%, you know, I love it uh, the, the same that I loved it the first time that I started it. So, yeah. Because otherwise you wouldn't do it for 12, 13 years now. Um, it's, uh, you have to love it to, to be able to continue it for such a long time and to stick with it and uh, put in the discipline because discipline becomes easy when you love it. You know, when you just love it so much, then discipline is like really easy. And I think it's actually you know, hard to call it discipline even, you know, when you really love it. So. Yeah, yeah. Like rest rest days become the the torture like sitting at <laughs> sitting at home and that's not being so able. true yeah. that's the discipline yeah taking a rest day and yeah that's true that's true and this is why it's so important this is where i love calisthenics it's like it has so much variety you know uh, i never judge someone because he wants to do freestyle or uh, one rep max or like uh, reps or only statics because I think the most important for everyone listening and for everyone in the calisthenics scene is that you find the workout style that you love, that you uh, that fits your personality, your your passion, and then it becomes easy to uh, achieve something great and to uh, reach your goals because um, you will have it much easier, like uh, showing discipline, and uh, you don't have to fight against um, not wanting to train every day. But if it's a passion, it's much easier. That's the best approach for me. <clears throat> and this is why people, for example, Stipke, he switched to more hybrid training. Uh, we saw Vadi Molenik uh, switching more to, to CrossFit, which is all okay, in my opinion, because <clears throat> I think the most important thing is that you don't get bored and that you, that you don't get sad through your workouts, but you really enjoy them. And this is what I feel when I see you, you know, you, you burn for it. You, you say, oh, f yeah. you know, fucking tendonitis, go away. You know, I want to, <laughs> I want to, uh, yeah, continue working out uh, at full, full speed. But um, yeah. Of course. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I can agree with that. 100%. Nice. Yeah. What are the next goals? What are the next steps? So for this year, uh, all that I have planned right now is the competitions you are um, uh, doing in fourth month. Mm -hmm. But uh, other than that, you know, I just want to give my body the rest that it needs right now because uh, this last year I only had planned one co one competitions and I did three of them. You know, uh, in like four months I think three competitions in four months. Uh, so yeah, for this year I don't think I'll do anything uh, until the fourth month. I'll just uh, do some deal loads, go to some sport massages, you know, and stuff like that, just to feel better. Yeah. And I guess we'll see about uh, what's happening after that, you know. Nice. So recovery advice uh, from your side, uh, you do deload, which means, uh, is it comparable to your 30% active rest uh, dip training that you talked about uh, on, on Monday? Or well, how does a deload look for you? Um, so the loads for me are, yeah, basically the same routines. I just did a uh, less amount of reps or I kind of increased the rest periods, uh, so I can focus on my range of motion, you know, and stuff like that. So, yeah, because I heard that for the tendons, uh, the best way you can, uh, heal the tendon to make it, uh, make it stronger is to focus on, uh, is it decentric, right? Uh, Mm -hmm. type of moment so what i do right now is i tr just try to bring out of uh the explosiveness uh, the explosiveness uh, in my workouts so i basically do everything slow uh so i still can feel the burn of the workout even though it's not as in 
as intense as it uh, usually is, you know, because of that uh, slow movements. So those are like my deloads. I also uh, have, I had one rest day a week. Now I have two rest days. I bring, uh, I had one leg day a week. Now I have two leg days a week, uh, just, you know, to get my upper body a little more rest. And I think that's about it, really. Uh, yeah, I, I do some foam rolling as well, stretching as well. Uh, I, I realize it helps really, really uh, a lot, you know, to recover. Um, and then the sport massages that uh, also help from time to time. Of course. I never been to one in my life. So oh, this year okay. I'm definitely going, yeah, I think it will change my life, man. <laughs> yeah. I think you deserve it now. Uh, your body sure. deserves it. Nice. So it was really, really interesting, uh, to talk to you. Uh, I really enjoyed this uh, this talk, and I'm really looking forward to see you perform next year at full full power after these uh, days of rest and uh, deload. And um, yeah, thank you for sharing so much. Thank you, man. It was a pleasure for me as well. Thank you so much. And uh, have Merry Christmas. Have a good start into 2024, and uh, yeah, we'll stay in touch, Bruno. Of course. Wish and Merry Christmas to you and your family as well. Thank you. Bye bye. See you.